Have you ever thought, I'm just too much of an adult and I take things too seriously. And I wonder, how can I see the world more through a child's eyes? That's what we'll talk about today. The child inside of you knows how to take things as they come, how to deal most effectively and happily with everything and everyone it encounters on this planet. If you can recapture that childlike essence of your being, you can stay forever young at heart. Wayne Dyer. Today, we're going to talk about the book, Escape Adulthood, Eight Secrets from Childhood for the Stressed Out Grown Up by Jason Kotecki. If you've never heard of Jason and his wife, Kim, they're really wonderful people who have a website called Escape Adulthood, trying to help people learn fun again, learn how to be a kid, and just see the world through different eyes. They have videos, they have a blog, and they have a bunch of tools, books, events, all sorts of things that they try to get people to get out of the humdrum life, get out of their desperate lives, and just start seeing the world with joy and adventure and all the things that you saw as a kid in the world around you. Instead, they want you to stop being an adult and start taking all the stupid rules that we put in our lives, all the stress, and start being fun again. Start looking at the world through their eyes so that they can help you have more fun, make better decisions, and just enjoy life again. My friend got involved with them a few years ago doing one of their photography events. and She absolutely loved it and just thinks the world of these two. And the two of them just got their lifelong ambition of buying a house on a lake. And as they were filming their video, a huge storm came by and decimated almost every tree on their brand new property. And they love the property for these trees. So they had to take a lot of their money that they made from their books and professional speaking and their artwork and put it into removing all the destroyed trees on their property. And so they asked people, instead of doing a Kickstarter, if you wouldn't mind pre-ordering their book. And she writes another set of books that are interesting, fun things. The one that's coming out and that they ask people to buy is a brand new book called Wonder Hunt. It's about doing a scavenger hunt in your own backyard, in the areas around you, so you can see your world with a set of new eyes. The links for their website will be in my show notes. And I thought I would talk a little bit about one of their books. Now, it's a little bit funny to me because I think at some times in the podcast, I come off as sounding like a very serious adult. And I'm not all that serious. I like to goof around. I like to play. And I just tell the funny jokes whenever there's an opportunity to tell a joke. I also can be serious because I do try to improve my life and do things that are better. And so I think it's a weird discrepancy inside my own personality. Maybe I'm like an Oreo cookie with funny on the inside and serious on the outside. Or maybe it's funny on the outside and serious on the inside. I'm not really sure what it is. About escaping adulthood really helps to try to put everything into perspective. He talks about how when you were a kid, made forts out of blankets and you hid under tables. And I know for me, I had this weird closet that had a cubby hole in it. And inside that cubby hole, I made a pretend campsite so I could pretend I was camping all the time. It had a little pretend fire in it, and I put pretend stars on the ceiling, and it was my special place to go hide as a kid. And then we just play, and we think of things, and we have adventures. When I used to go for walks in the snow, and I had to wear all those big clunky boots and the big thick jackets, I was pretend that I was an astronaut. And I was walking on the moon and I would take these big over exaggerated steps as if I was on the moon and I had to fight the lack of atmosphere to take another step. It was silly and it was funny. But the real question is, where did all of that go? He talks about that in adolescence, we start going through stages where we get complex feelings, we get torn away from our childhood, and then we start getting past that and we think 
of our childhood as being that uncomfortable era. So then we just kind of forget about our childhoods entirely because the last thing we remember is that uncomfortable teenage years, and we don't want to go back to that. So then, little by little, we start to lose our childhood. We start to lose that connection to playing, and then we get overwhelmed with being an adult, going to work, paying for the bills, and having things happen to us. I had a rainstorm last week, and my roof started to leak, and now I'm suddenly thinking, wow, where am I going to get the money to get a roof? All of that just starts becoming stressful. It makes us depressed. And sometimes it can make people feel disillusioned, upset, and wondering what happened to all those goals they had in their lives. He says that eventually it saps away the energy to do something. So even if we had the power and the ambition to do something about the problems in our lives, we're just exhausted because that loss of childhood And that adventure and the goals we had are so far from us that we can't bring ourselves to get back into living life like an adventure. And he says that's where we have to escape this adulthood, this stresshood that we've created for ourselves. And the interesting thing is, is as a kid, we had no power. But right now as adults, we have that power to live our own lives, he says, and to change the things that are really dissatisfying about what we've become or the ways that our lives have gone. And we can start learning to play all over again, just like we did when we were a kid. But he says that all this stuff, all the stress, all these pressures that we feel, nothing is written down ordering us to take that in or do all these things. Our lives are our own to live with how we want to. He says that we just have to get back into practice. We have to think about all those foods that we used to eat, all the funds we used to have, and not think about the bills. Even sometimes the simple things in life, like saying hi to a friend or calling someone and wishing them well because you know that they've had a rough time. All those things can be the simple things in life that will make life better for everybody. And it's even worse because when we tell people they're acting like a kid, We mean it as an insult, and we look at them as if they just can't grow up. We have to stop looking at childhood or having a childlike wonder as not an insult, but actually something that we're trying to attain, something that we're going for so that we can make our lives happier. And he said that the very first step of doing that is to just slow down a little bit, not be so packed in with all the things that we have to do as an adult. He says that when you're a kid, you did silly things. You ate everything, you ran through the woods, you liked to laugh, you made up silly jokes, and then all the strange activities you did. I tried to build a parachute gun. I don't know what I did, but it was essentially a crossbow arrow where I took a toy that was hooked up to a parachute that I sewed myself and launched it into the air, hoping that the parachute would open. And you know what? Darn near every time the parachute didn't open and the toy came crashing to the ground. Why did I do that? I don't know, but it was a lot of fun and I remember doing that. There's all sorts of fun things that we did as a kid. And he asks us to join him in learning how to become more of a kid. Get excited about the little things in life. Start looking at the world with that sense of wonder again. He says it's time that we take time out We eat a good meal. We pay attention to everything around us. We go to parks and we just have some fun or watch other people have fun. We look to see what makes other people, other kids laugh and have fun and then try to figure out what we can do to make ourselves feel that kind of joy again. And even thinking about trying to do something for someone else, be nice to them, maybe Bring someone flowers who needs a happy day or volunteer for something so that you can make other people's lives better. All these things are going to help us bring back the joy in our own life and feel like a kid again. He brings up Thomas Edison, who had a really interesting quote, because when we get stuck as being an adult, we think about, oh, I tried this and it didn't work. It's not going to work. 
and we dismiss things because we tried it once or we tried it a couple of times, we become frustrated. But what Edison said after he tried so many different ways to build a light bulb and they all failed, he said, I have not failed. I just found 10,000 ways that won't work. We have to get that sense of resilience back into us and not feel so stressed out when something doesn't quite go our way. We learned a lesson, and now we know how to do things better the next time. And he says even in his own life, he thinks about these opportunities that he missed, things that he was too frightened to try, and now he just wants to start doing it and taking those steps to making his own dreams come true has a lot to do with buying that house, right? He envisioned his life in this house on a lake and he reached out and he did it. Now he hit an obstacle with this storm and I'm sure it's frustrating. I'm sure he thinks that here I went after my goals in life and I got smacked down, but instead, I'm sure of it, he's gonna go after these new stresses and these new things that went wrong with his dream And he's going to tackle him like a true adventurer. He has his family behind him. And he's going to have to say that all the negative thoughts and all the things that are blocking his way, that we give them too much power. And I have so much confidence just after reading his book that he's going to be able to get through even his own struggles, which are pretty big right now, in the same grace and fun and adventure that he's telling us to do to get over our own life struggles. And he says it's not even about being privileged or having a great education or having all the things that we tend to think of as helping people to succeed. If it was true that you had to be, he said, quote, connected, then no one in history would have ever invented anything. A majority of the people that we know in history had problems to overcome. Beethoven being deaf or Einstein being poor and having to work as a clerk, and all those people beat the challenges that they had in their own lives to get their dreams. And he suggests, like a lot of the books that we've talked about this year, to find out what your purpose is and to start going after those things that you were created to do. And that's why being a kid is so great for us and why it's such an important step for us. Because when we get that kid-like vision back again, we start to believe in He calls magic going after things that we didn't think were possible and making them come true. And we do that as a kid. He has some advice for us so that we can start doing better at reaching our goals. And he says the first thing to do is write down your dreams and then take those dreams and turn them into specific goals. It's easy to say, I want to have a business someday or I want to live on a lake someday. You have to make them more specific so that you can actually tackle what it is you're trying to get. If you say, I just want to have a business someday, or I want to get married someday, or I just wish to be a backpacker someday and have that fire dream, what exactly does that mean? What is that goal specifically that you're trying to get? And then he says that we have to take those goals and write them into steps. And then each step is a specific task. And then when we have that task list all written, we start putting dates to it. And the dates are important because if we never pin anything down, we will let ourselves slide for decades, not getting our dreams. And he says that it's important that we get our goals, not just because it'll make our own lives better and the lives of the people around us better, but you'll start to inspire everybody. And so what can we do when we make our own goals happen? How do we inspire other people to get their goals? I know when I lost that weight a while ago, a lot of other people came to me and said, I'm now trying to lose weight. I've never been able to do it. And now, because I've seen you do it, I feel like I could do it too. And he said, quote, if there were ever a time to dare to make a difference, to embark on something worth doing, it is now. His book is so inspirational, and these are such inspirational people. And if you saw their videos or you read some of their other books, they're all so silly, and they're fun, and they're nice people. And that combination is just so hard to beat. But you want to go for something that tugs at your heart, he says, that 
your aspirations, something you've been dreaming of. I think something too that you have skill towards, you know, that you think that it would actually work. But he says that you owe it to yourself to make your days here count. And then he read the text from a 1991 Mac computer ad. And it says, not for any grand cause necessarily, but for something that tugs at your heart, something that's your aspiration, something that's your dream. You owe it to yourself to make your days here count. Have fun. Dig deep. Stretch. Dream big. And that was a computer ad. So pretty inspirational for a computer ad, but he remembers it and it must have inspired him too. So he gives us some hints about how we can dream to do better. And he said that if you could do anything with everything that you have, you know, your education, your experiences, what would you do? Even if you don't think it could happen, just write those things down and then think some people around you that you really appreciate who you look at mentors in your life or you look at inspirations and read some stuff about it and see what kinds of big things they had to overcome in their own life in order to make it happen. And then to make sure that whenever you have dreams, aspirations, a good idea, something that you would love to do, write that down too. And then, as he said before, start breaking them into small steps. It's important too that you have people around you who can support you. It's really hard to do things in life, but when you don't have that support backing, it can become even harder. And if you feel like you don't have that, I'm telling you to reach out and go find those people who will support you. There's always online groups of people who are doing what you're doing. When I started the podcast, I got involved in some Reddit groups and some other groups of people who are doing podcasts and we would cheer each other on. It's important one way or the other to find people who have good ideas, who will listen to your ideas, and then help support you. He talks about how Ben Franklin never lost that childhood interest in other people. He says that new employees are often fantastic because they have such a fresh perspective on things. And that when we're trying to regain our curiosity in life, the best thing we can do is keep asking why. He has somebody in meetings that he calls dissenters. There's always the note taker and there's always someone who is the person who is the devil's advocate, maybe. But instead, why not have someone that keeps asking the why question? Because they're always going to challenge those ideas, almost like a kid. You know, and you keep going until you run out of why questions because you can't get any further. Those why questions are going to tell you all sorts of things. He says the other thing is that when we're ever in a new situation, the best thing we can do is ask questions of other people. But the why question will get you everywhere. And even in our own goals, he said we can turn it back at us. If we want to do something that's inspiring to us, ask ourselves a question too. You can even make it fun, he says. You could create a scrapbook of things that inspire you. We talked in that one episode about making the vision board so that you always have this visual representative in front of you. And he says that you can wear funny clothes, do lots of fun activities, sing, run around. And he gives a website, which is instituteforplay.com, if you're looking for more information on how to play. But when we get there, we can be more fun have more imagination and more creativity into our own problems. And he says that when we get into fear, he calls it a false evidence appearing real. Meaning when we're afraid of something, we're not looking at it realistically. And what we're seeing is false. Oh, I can't do that. I can't lose weight. I can't get a new job. Anytime you tell yourself that, it's just not true. And we spend too much time worrying about things that we no longer believe we can do. But he says that we have to keep going and that God has our back. We can get there if we keep trying to get there and if we give it a shot and have that childlike adventure. Says so you can even write down what's the worst thing that could happen? What's the best thing that could happen? And what's the likely thing that could happen? And that way, it'll give you a perspective about how true those fears really are. And he says in the end that 
kids care less about things. When something breaks, they put it back together or they go find something else to do. When they have a step forward, they're grateful for it. They laugh and they have fun. They take a step backwards. You know what? They laugh and have fun at that too. You can take that childlike activity, that curiosity, and bring it together so that not only are you getting your goals with that sense of adventure, but you're having joy, laughs, and all the fun that your life deserves. So my challenge to you is to write down three dreams. Pick one of the dreams that you think is something that you would love and that you're capable of doing and start to give it some exact details about what it is you're looking to do. And then write the first three steps you could take in order to get that dream. I hope you enjoyed this look at childhood. All the links will be in my show notes. So if you're interested in Kim and Jason, any of their books or their events, both virtual and in person, or you just want to watch their videos, they'll be there in the show notes so you can take a look. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks so much for being there. And again, you can email me at jill at smallstepspod.com if there's anything you'd like to tell me. And tell a friend that they can escape adulthood and be a kid again by taking small steps.